everyone. Welcome to Tanya Jane English. I'm Tanya and today I'm here with my daughter Tiana. Hey. And our dog Delaware has joined us for a little bit anyway. We'll see if she lasts for the whole for the whole video. So <laughs> today we have a big announcement that we want to share with you all. So stay with us. episode not too long ago, we told you all that we had an announcement that we would be making soon. And today is the day for our big announcement. So I'm going to turn it to Tiana to tell you about that. Yeah, so I've been watching this channel and watching my mom uh, develop this channel and it's been looking like a really cool experience. And so I've decided to join this channel as a partner. Yay! <laughs> I'm very excited to have Tiana join me as a partner on this channel. There's, mm -hmm. There are so many reasons why that is such a wonderful thing for me personally and for the channel. But for now, I want to hear a little bit from Tiana and why she made this choice because she's already been very helpful. But I want to know why you decided to make this choice to be a partner instead of just helping out your mom. Well, uh, I think it's just looks like so much fun and it's something that I'd really like to be a part of. I found myself thinking, ah, oh, I wish I had done that with her from the start. Me too. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I teach English too and so I just felt like it would be a really great tool for my students and to share with everyone, so yeah. <laughs> So we both teach online. We both teach English online. Uh, mm -hmm. We typically use Skype, although I've used some other platforms. I think you have as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's something that I absolutely love. I know that's true for Tiana as well. Mm -hmm. But tell us a little bit about what your favorite thing is about teaching, teaching English. Oh, well, I love teaching English. Um, and I love, I think my favorite part is learning about different cultures and meeting so many new people. I feel like, uh, you know, we have a saying, you learn something new every day. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's especially true for me when I have students. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. We're here to teach and we end up learning so much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I study English, so I get to learn from school and then bring what I have learned to my students and it's just really a great experience um, and I get to share really share my love of the language so absolutely yeah. so mm -hmm. tell us just a little bit about what you mean I study English that that seems uh. <laughs> confusing a little bit like you speak English you're a native speaker <laughs> why are you studying English yeah so in the United States, really, we call um, like a literature or writing or linguistics degree an English degree. Um, but it's kind of a study of all of those things, including actually rhetoric, so um, studying like logic and all that kind of stuff. Um, and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> if you didn't understand what she just said. <laughs> That's because she's acting like an English major. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so could you like tell us all of that in like mm -hmm. a language that I can understand and our viewers can understand? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so basically what I do is I read a lot, I write a lot, and I think about um, the connections between all those books and things that I've studied. And then I get to put it into practice in my own writing. And I even take some classes on learning languages, just in general, it might be English or Spanish or whatever language you want to learn, so. So I never really asked you this, mm -hmm. but when you take classes in linguistics, do you learn about similarities between languages or no? A little bit, okay. yeah. I took a, um, a very broad class. So I got to learn a little bit about uh, a lot of different parts of linguistics. There are even many fields of linguistics that you could study. So, 
when, yeah. when she was taking that class, I was very jealous. But the good thing for me was I got to learn a lot of what she learned, and mm-hmm. I didn't have to take the class because she shared some really cool things <laughs> with me, which maybe we will share some of that with you in, an, in another video sometime. Let us know if that's something you're interested in. So Yeah. Um, so I was going to say what she said that made me – that sounded confusing right there. I was thinking – of some things when you said that, that some of the things Tiana has studied might be things you have heard of before, like I have, but you, she has studied them more in depth. So things mm-hmm. like Shakespeare, mm-hmm. Chaucer, Chaucer from England. England. Oh, mm-hmm. She went to England and studied some of the more famous and historical writers there, right? Yeah, so. yeah. So yeah, Yeah. there's a lot that goes into that, but she has a lot to add to the channel with that and so many other things. So Um, I wanted to share with you a few of my favorite things in teaching English as well. One of them is how different it is now versus when I was a child. When I was a child, I would never have even dreamed that I could teach English to people all over the world Mm -hmm. um, from my house. So uh, that totally blows my mind. That's an idiom we use a lot. That's an idiom she uses a lot, especially. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I know a lot of other people who also use that idiom. Yeah, they know. (laughs) Sometimes, sometimes my children like to make fun of me for the idioms that I use. And that's another great thing is that Mm -hmm. we get to bring two different viewpoints of English, two native English speakers who live in different generations, mine being slightly older than her, (laughs) just just a little bit, and hers being so young and fresh. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, and the other thing that I really like about teaching online Mm -hmm. is the, um, the way that I hear things from all over the world that maybe I've heard before or I've read about it before, but now I get to hear about it straight from the horse's mouth. So there's another idiom that um, is useful, meaning I get to hear it from the people that it's actually about. I get Mm -hmm. to hear it from the people who live in those countries, not just on the internet, not Mm -hmm. just in a book. Um, That idiom, I did a little bit of uh, looking into it, and that idiom, straight from the horse's mouth, (laughs) originated in horse racing. Oh, really? Yeah, which it seems like that would be someplace it might come from, but I never thought of that. And um, I lost my train of thought, another idiom. (laughs) That makes sense if you're like betting on horses and thinking which one's going to be best. Yes. I heard it straight from the horse's mouth that this one's going to win or something like that. Wait a minute. You stole my line. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're totally right. See how did you just thought of I that? I was thinking about it. Yeah. yeah. She's totally right <laughs> that if you were going to place a bet on a horse, you'd want to know from somebody who's in the inside circle, in other words, people who are working with the horses like the trainer Mm -hmm. or the rider or the owner. But Mm -hmm. even better than that is to hear it straight from the horse's mouth, which you totally guessed right away. (laughs) I I had to look it up on the internet. So I just thought it was really weird. So I'm like, (laughs) how would that have happened? (laughs) Mostly we Mm -hmm. use idioms without thinking about where they come from, Mm -hmm. which I imagine you probably do as well in your native language. So Mm -hmm. if if you have an idiom that you use a lot, share it with us below and let us know if you know where that idiom came from. But (laughs) I did accidentally say another one or naturally say another one, which is I lost my train of thought. Mm -hmm. I say this all the time. If any of my students are watching, they're saying they're nodding their head. (laughs) Yes, they already know that one (laughs) because I lose my train of thought a lot. May every once in a while, <laughs> but not as much being the youngster that she is. But uh, losing my train of thought, I just mean I was talking and then I suddenly forgot what I was going to say. Mm-hmm. I I lost my train of thought. So, yeah. okay, where were we? Did you lose it again? <laughs> <laughs> so no, I I found my. 
my train of thought, which we never say. No, we didn't say that. <laughs> but I did. And mm -hmm. um, so share with us some specific examples. Uh-oh. You would say, I got back on track. That's totally what you would say. <laughs> which I, I never would have thought to say it in that context. Well, because usually we say, let's get back on track. For instance, yeah. if you were in a meeting mm -hmm. and everybody started talking about something else like we just kind of did here, mm -hmm. um, then maybe the leader, the person who is leading the meeting might say, okay, okay, let's get back on track, mm -hmm. meaning let's get back to what we were talking about. So Yeah, and I think the weird thing was just that I n we never thought that those two idioms were connected. Right. But you could say track as in a train track. Yeah. And if you lose your train of thought, then it's not on track. Right. So. Very cool, Katie. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> you learn something new every day. Yeah. That's a phrase we use. Not an idiom so much, but a mm -hmm. phrase that's common. You learn something new every day. So, mm -hmm. okay, let's get back on track. <laughs> uh, you were going to tell us a, maybe some specific examples of teaching that you have mm -hmm. really loved. Some, some of your favorite things from mm -hmm. teaching. Yeah, so I think it's just really, you get to really know people um, when you're talking so much. And um, recently mm -hmm. I got to uh, know some of one of my students' uh, friends and she got to meet my mom and my sister. And it was super cool. Yeah, it was just really fun. And I think that's one of my favorite parts of teaching. Um, another part kind of similar is I've had this student for months and months and we've talked a lot and I've got to learn more about his work, um, which is interesting for me as a student trying to mm -hmm. figure out where I want to go. And probably not something you would have learned any other way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't even necessarily have to be something I want to do, but mm -hmm. it's interesting to hear about so many options and different ways of life. I feel like I've learned a lot from him and all of my students. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so one of the things that I have loved about teaching is, well, Tiana and my other daughter can attest to this, that when I have been teaching with a student and I come out of my office, I'm almost come, every time I'm like, guess what I learned today? Or guess what happens in this country or that country? Yeah. I always have a story. Yeah, and she's often busy, but she's like, I'm going to tell you later about what my student told me today. It's so interesting. <laughs> so Yeah, and it oftentimes mm -hmm. it leads me to looking something up on the internet I wouldn't mm -hmm. have thought of looking up. So that's one of my favorite things. But one of the stories I wanted to share also kind of blows my mind, to use that idiom <laughs> again, is when I was a child, of course, I learned about how the weather or the seasons are different in the northern hemisphere mm -hmm. of the world from the southern hemisphere of the world. And mm -hmm. of course, when we here in the northern hemisphere are, are experiencing winter, in the southern hemisphere, they're experiencing summer. Mm -hmm. And then the opposite, when we have summer, they have winter. And I remember thinking, that doesn't seem real. I mean, I understand the logic. Mm -hmm. I understand why that is. But mm -hmm. I've just never, it's just never really sunk in. By that I mean, mm -hmm. it's just never really been something that I really got it. I understood it, but I didn't really have it within mm -hmm. me. And now having uh, the t opportunity to talk with people that when I'm in the summer, they are in winter and we're wearing different things and having different experiences mm -hmm. or vice versa when I've been in the winter and they are just so hot because it's summer, it, it for some reason, it was like I learned it for the first time. It was just <laughs> mm -hmm. exciting, like I said, to hear it straight from the horse's mouth, to hear it straight yeah. from somebody who's actually having that experience and not my second or third grade teacher <laughs> telling me about this in Nebraska, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> where mm -hmm. we don't see anything uh, outside of, you know, our our part of the world so mm -hmm. and now in arizona it's like oh my gosh in summer mm -hmm. wish i was in the southern hemisphere exactly right now. maybe exactly. a little winter would be nice <laughs> although not too long ago when they were having summer i was not wishing that i was there they were 
really having a heat wave. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. So anyway, to get back on track <laughs> again, we are going to be having a lot of goals coming. Mm -hmm. This is our first major thing to share with you that you will see changing, but there will be more things that are coming up. So for instance, mm -hmm. now instead of introducing our videos as Tanya Jane English, we will be changing that to include Tiana. So our new introduction <laughs> will be welcome to Tanya and Tiana English. <laughs> so you'll be seeing that in a lot of videos upcoming and we have other goals as well. So mm -hmm. um, we're just excited to be able to share our um, love of English and our teaching what, on a larger scale. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and by larger scale, what do you mean by larger scale? Um, so, for instance, uh, now we teach face to face, and I, I don't know that one on one, one on one, La meaning one one teacher, one student. Mm -hmm. And now these videos will be able to help us teach a larger audience. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, large scale meaning we'll have the opportunity to do this with more people who want to learn English versus a small scale, which we have already enjoyed doing one-on-one um, mm -hmm. -on -one or in less, fewer people. So mm -hmm. that's one of our goals is being able to reach more people. So yeah. uh, you definitely are going to want to listen for more announcements because as we make some changes and we continue to make our goals, we'll be sharing those things with you. But for now, uh, we want to know what you want, um, what would be helpful for you, and maybe what's confusing about English or something that we could explain a little better, um, because we want this channel to be helpful to you. We want to know how to make it better, so we can, we can help with all of those things. Just mm -hmm. let us know. Mm -hmm. Leave your ideas, your comments, your thoughts in the comment section below. Mm -hmm we will read all of your comments. Now that there's two of us, there are so many reasons that, so many things I should say, that are gonna um, work really well for yeah. this channel together. But we, we will read all of your comments, so let us know in the comments below because we really do wanna be your favorite YouTube channel for learning English. Yeah, so let us know how we can do that and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs> Bye.